Uh, let's see if you use the frequency counter tool, and these are the two histograms you should get, text 1 and text 2. And in text 2, you can see that the E is the most frequent letter, so you would conclude that that's the transposition cycle, and text 1 is the, the substitution cycle. So we can analyze simple substitution even though there's a vast number of possible keys using frequency analysis because the text, whether we encrypt it or not, is going to have certain frequency patterns. Can we mask that? Can we turn this into this where the frequencies are suppressed and we can't tell one letter from another? And the answer is yes. We can use multiple alphabets. And in fact, this was done as far back as the 16th century uh, using a cipher that's come to be attributed to Blaise Visionier. He didn't actually invent it, but his name has become associated with it. Look at this table. What we have here are the Caesar alphabets, each of which has a different shift. So the first row, there's no shift. The second row, the letters are shifted by one and then two and then three, and this is actually the key Caesar used for his Caesar cipher. So you have the 26 alphabets. Here's how the algorithm works. What you would do is you would use a keyword like zebra to identify different alphabets. So zebra would pick out five different alphabets, the Z alphabet, the E alphabet, the B alphabet, R alphabet, and A alphabet. And then you would write the keyword above the letters of the plain text message and then use the alphabet indicated by the keyword to encrypt each letter of the message. So let's give that a try. To encrypt H we pick the Z alphabet, we pick H and then we go down the column to see that that would encrypt to G. For E we pick the E alphabet, the E column go down the column and we see that that encrypts the I. For the letter L, we use the B alphabet. We go over to the L and then come down the column and we see that it encrypts the M. The next L, however, we're using a different alphabet. In this case, we're using the R alphabet. So that L encrypts the C. Notice the LL pattern has disappeared in the, in the ciphertext. Finally, with A, we go to the A uh, row, select the O, and that just encrypts to itself. So this is how the Visioneer cipher works. And decryption would work in the opposite direction. For example, to decrypt the G using the Z alphabet, you would select the Z alphabet, and you would go over to the G, and then you would go up the column and determine that that is associated with the plain text letter H. So you can go back and forth using Visioneer by hand. I'm going to pause here and let you try doing some encryption and decryption with the Visioneer cipher.